Hello and welcome to Ross 101 Fun Approach, delivered to you by Samir. Uh, let's have a quick recap on what we did so far. We navigated autonomously with the help of Arvis GUI, and we said that Arvis is just a, um, a visualization tool, while Gazebo itself is the simulation environment. <clears throat> so Arvis can let you see what you can't usually see in reality. It's like the hidden layer, like the sensor observations, the maps, um, um, paths, and stuff like that. We were also introduced to autonomous navigation concepts like uh, path planning, control, uh, simultaneous localization and mapping, and localization and mapping as individual processes. We ran localization, uh, move base, and other navigation nodes that have to do with the navigation stack or the navigation package of the Turtle Bot 3. So today we'll learn how to navigate without using Arvis. We'll start writing our own code for navigation and we'll begin on, our, on the first part of our final project, which is the AutoNav package, which is basically an autonomous navigation package designed for TurtleBot 3 robot. So let's dive in. So what we'll basically do today is that we are going to write two pieces of software for that uh, target that we spoke of earlier, which is the autonomous navigation without using Arvis. So what we did in Arvis last time uh, included initializing our position so that we can um, align uh, the map or the static map with the actual physical environment. So that was step one. And step two, we used uh, some red arrow on Arvis to locate our goal and make our vehicle move towards that goal. So what we're going to do today is that we're going to write two codes for these particular purposes. And you can find these codes attached in your <clears throat> session folder. Uh, let me open these. So I'm going to get them here somewhere. I wrote them earlier. And let us investigate these two codes. Sorry, it was not here. It was, yeah. So let us copy those codes. All right, and let us not forget to change our sourcing. So we've got our bash RC and I'm going to change it back to Catkin workspace, which is the workspace for our tutorial. I'm going to save that. And then I'm going to head towards um, our workspace. I'm just going to hide everything again. Sorry, not hide it that way. Um, yeah. So let's go to Catkin workspace here and let us um, go to the SRC and let us create a new package. So I'm going to open a terminal here and I'm going to say Catkin create package. And I'm, I'm going to call it auto nav. And this is the first part where we actually get to feel that we're working on an actual project that you as a Rose developer uh, are responsible for uh, building. Uh, and sometimes you, are, as a Rose developer, you're not quite familiar with the exact details of the execution of the algorithms. But you as an engineer have to understand the intuition behind the components or the software components of these packages and try to align them in order to achieve a certain task, even if you're not really aware of the very low level details of these uh, environments. So what we're gonna do in this project is that we're gonna focus on developing that skill of trying to understand packages and how to use them. So first of all, I'm gonna create my Catkin create, uh, sorry, my AutoNav package. So Catkin create package, AutoNav. Right, so we got AutoNav here. And we're going to build our workspace, so let's head to the parent directory and let's catkin build. So everything was built and we're good to go. So as we're used to, we're, we're going to create a new folder called scripts. And we're going to go here and we're going to paste our codes. So the first target here is initializing our pose. 
which is giving our initial pose to you know the Ross master somehow and or in this case um, the navigation stack and then trying to align both uh, the static map and the actual physical map together so what we're gonna do here is that we're gonna open up the code and before going through the code we need to understand first the main concepts behind this uh, navigational stack uh, stage so let us open Arvis. let us actually try to do what we did last time so first of all we're gonna we're going to the final robot, which is Burger, and we're going to Ross launch our world, which is TurtleBot3 world. Um, right, um, that is strange. Yeah, maybe that terminal was open before sourcing, maybe? Um, all right, let us just copy the command again from one of the main tabs we have here. So let's open up our e-manual. And yeah, let's try to copy that. So I copied it again, and it seems to be the same thing. So I'm not really sure. So, all right, let us just open, uh, close this uh, terminal and let's open a new one. So I'm going to export the burger robot and then I'm going to try and launch my TurtleBot3 um, world. Um, this is actually strange. Right, so let's get back to the bash RC maybe. So I'll try to get back to the bash RC and change my sourcing once more. <clears throat> right, so let's change this back to Sam workspace. And let's get back one more time. To the terminal and let's try that. Oh, uh, total bot 3 is not defined, and then um, while well, it is working, which is kind of strange. Oh, yeah, it's because I forgot I didn't download our uh, turtle bot 3 simulation package into the Catkin workspace that was included in the SAM workspace. So, no problem, we'll deal with the SAM workspace for now. All right, no problem. All right, so as we said before, let us open up Arvis. So I'll export the burger robot, and I'm gonna open the navigation stack uh, package. Yeah, that one. So Arvis will be loaded now, and we're here. So the first step we did actually was using the 2D nav goal. So as we said before, as we investigate any running process, we need to know what topics are there. So we'll topic list. So we can see that, well, up there we have the AMCL parameters. We've got something here, some topic called initial pose. So I guess that has to do with our process here. So let us echo that uh, initial pause, pause topic, right? So it appears to be not published yet. So let us keep it here and let us get to Orvis and, you know, do the, the 2D pose estimate thing. And let's just place a robot here and notice what happens on the terminal. Right, so, well, I guess nothing changed in the initial pose, which is strange. Uh, 
Well, all right. Uh, I'll give you a little, you know, tip here. The initial pose is actually the topic that is responsible for setting the initial position of the robot on, uh, you know, um, relative to our map here or relative to our uh, uh, global positioning. Uh, but I think that Arvis does not really, um, you know, let uh, its uh, its uh, Right, let its data be published here. So we can say raw topic info initial pose uh, did I type it wrong or maybe I did type it wrong. Where is it? Initial oh yeah, I did. I did. So yeah, that was the problem. All right. So let us get the information. So the information it's a geometry message, right? Which is a special type of geometry messages called pose with covariance stamped. The publishers are Arvis, and the subscribers are the adaptive Monte Carlo localization algorithm. So that means Arvis gets to decide what the 2D uh, pose estimate is, and this is really the process of like uh, getting the the green arrow here. So this is the process through which Arvis uh, publishes the initial position, and it gets loaded into the adaptive Monte Carlo localization because the adaptive Monte Carlo localization by default lets the robot sit somewhere here in the middle of you know, uh, in the middle of our environment. So this is the reason for that shift. So we need to inform the AMCL that our initial position is actually a little bit shifted from the center of the environment. So there is a difference. Uh, the global fixed frame is like uh, here somewhere. So the adaptive Monte Carlo localization always assumes that the robot is somewhere here in the middle. Well, actually, the robot started here because, you know, adaptive Monte Carlo localization just assumes that the zero position is the starting position, all right? So it says, like, the robot is located here, and I'm going to assume that. But actually, we're working in some global environment, and this is why there is a shift. So we got to make our vis or make the visualization understand that we're actually located far from the center of the environment and we need to pass that to the adaptive Monte Carlo localization in order for it to adjust like shift or uh, make an offset in the robust location in, uh, in the belief in order to make the belief and the reality uh, consistent. So let us try to 2D pose estimate again. So let's Put it here for example again uh, sorry i'm currently rotating the environment 2d pose estimate and i'm going to pick the same location because it seems to be really accurate so let's see oh i forgot to uh, for topic echo right so nothing's published so far so let us make the 2d pose estimate thing And yeah, you can find that the message was indeed sent from Arvis to the AMCL, and we could equal the topic here, and we found that uh, the message was indeed sent. So it's having a header, and this header basically has something to do with the timestamp and the frame ID. So it's basically a naming for this uh, topic message. And uh, the pose data, which is pretty important here, uh, and of course, the frame ID is important as well because we're referencing uh, this pose relative to the uh, to uh, the origin of the map. So we have to include the name of the map topic, which is map. And uh, here we have the position, which is negative two, uh, yeah, slightly to the right, and y slightly. I think x is here because x seems to be a little bit shifted. So I think that's x and this is y. So the forward is like x, x is here, and y is somewhere here. So this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis. And the z-axis is coming out of this point. 
So yeah, we shifted like negative 2 in the x-axis and negative 0.5 in the y-axis. And this is the, the translation or the offset that we needed in order to make the two maps like consistent. So we understand now that the initial post topic is the key for our uh, new code. So let's just kill that. Let's kill that as well. We don't need it any longer. Let's keep the environment for now. So let's head back to our code here in Sam Workspace SRC. So I already built Odonav here. You can find that there are a lot of files here, but just forget all of that and let's just focus on the scripts right now. And let's open the initial pose.py. But before opening it, we mentioned that we had like some message called pose with covariance stamped as far as I can remember. So let's get to the other locations and study that me that message. Let's go to the opt, ROS, Yotic, share, and let's get here to the geometry messages somewhere here. Yep, here it is. And let's get to the types of messages. So we got pose, pose with covariance stamped. Here it is. So we can find that this message is composed of a header and a pose with covariance, which is another type of message. So this is a composite message. So there's pose with covariance here. So this is the other message, which is a subset of this message, which in itself has a pose variable and a covariance variable, which is basically a float uh, number. So we're currently interested in the pose. So the pose is a message in itself. So we're talking about a subset of a subset of a subset. So let's open pose here. So you've got a position and orientation, like point and quaternion, which are indeed messages in themselves. So I've got position and quaternion. So we've got the quaternion message here, and we've got the point message here. So the point, I assume it will be a vector of three floats, and the quaternion, I guess, same thing. Now it's not quite the same thing because we have like the quaternion has four components as we said before x y z w so yeah so it's basically a subset of a subset of a subset of a subset and we need these components in order to know how to write the message just as we did before all right so let's keep that here for now and let us get back to our package So let's want to, to, to head to the home directory or the same workspace here, the SRC and autonav and the scripts and let's open up initial pose.py. So first of all, you'll find the usual components and we needn't waste time on typing that on screen right now because you're already familiar with that and you can like write this uh, code and practice uh, writing it on your own despite the fact that you have the files already attached, but I recommend that you start thinking and working on the code and debugging it and seeing errors and figuring out why errors are showing up and stuff like that. This is the right way to learn. So anyway, we've got the environment line as usual and we've got our imports. So we import a ROSPY, which is quite usual. And then from geometry messages, we knew that we had to use a message called pose with covariance stamp because we're going to manipulate the initial pose topic. So it is reasonable to import that kind of message. There is another message here, which is called odometry and is coming from the nav messages to message. And we're going to say why we included it, but bear with me. So first of all, I'm going to initialize the node. So using rawspider's init node, and I'm, I'm going to call it the same name as the file, so init pose, and that's it. And we're going to use a publisher, because I'm going to publish instead of Arvis. So on behalf of Arvis, I'll be publishing the initial pose. So I'll publish to the topic initial pose, and I know this topic is of the type pose with covariance stand, and I'll make my queue size is equal to, to 1. So far, everything seems quite reasonable. So in order to publish that message, I have to construct that message first. So I'm going to construct the message and I'm going to call it initial message or init message. And I'm going to define it to be of the type pose with covariance stamped, right? 
And as we saw in Arvis, the header of that uh, message is supposed to be uh, ma the map, right? So we're gonna, you know, copy this name here, map, and it's gonna be our frame ID. So you got the first part of the pose with covariance stamped, which is the header. And we already investigated it somewhere here when we raw topic echo. So you can find that the, her the, the header here has some stamps and stuff like that. I'm only interested in the frame ID because the stamp is like uh, is not very you know useful. You can include it if you want to include the timestamp, and you might just ignore it. I just ignored it. So the frame ID is what matters right now. So I know that the header has um, like a composite uh, or like a subset message um, called frame ID. So what I'm gonna do here in my code is that. I'm going to say that the init message has a component called header, which is a message in itself. And this message has a component called frame ID. So it's an object of an object of an object or property of an object, property of a property of an object. And then I'm going to call it map. So, so far I'm like mimicking Arvis. So afterwards, well, what we need to do is we need to pass the the right initial pose to uh, the AMCL. But the problem is, uh, when we were using Arvis, we had to determine it visually. I had to use the arrows. But right now in the code, I don't know where the in initial location is. So I need the help of some gazebo features in order to determine where the current location is or where the initial position is. And actually, gazebo has an, uh, a topic called Odom which basically we we got introduced to that before so that topic of dom let's run it now let's topic echo dom so this topic includes all the information about my velocities and my position or pose and I, I can't really remember whether the, the velocity component is like global velocity or local velocity, but anyway, I don't need it right now. And I can investigate that by running the Teddy operation, for example, and letting the robot move with like um, with some orientation, theta, in order to determine whether there are two components of velocities, so there's like some resolution or I'm just walking in the forward direction, so that means there will be only a local x component. So that's one way to get to to, de to detect whether the linear velocities are global or local. But I'm not interested in the uh, velocity right now. I'm interested in the pose here. It's not the twist. Yeah. So basically, what the gazebo says here is that the robot is located at this position relative to the origin of gazebo or of gazebo environment. So this is basically the message that I need. This is the location that I was trying to determine visually. And in this case, I'm even describing it in more accurate terms because I have solid numbers. So all what I have to do is to cheat these values from gazebo and put them into my code. So someone might ask, well, gazebo does not exist in reality. So how is it like in the real world? In the real world, you are the one to decide where the origin of your environment is. So you can assume that wherever the robot starts is just, you know, the initial position, all right? Uh, or you can just determine where the origin of your map was when you started, like, creating the static map. <clears throat> the static map is usually a reference to the middle, so it's like... Uh, your map is like um, assumes always that the robot is in the is in the middle or something like that. So you gotta compare the safe map with the current laser scans coming from the robot, and then you can get an idea on how uh, much the robot is like uh, biased from the original location. So you can you can determine it actually experimentally in real life. So you gotta compare reality against uh, uh, the the map itself, which is yeah which is probably the thing you should do, right? Um, unless your robot started the static map at the same exact position, for example, where it started navigating, so I think the offset will be zero, most likely then. Um, but anyway, you can determine it experimentally, 
right? But here, since we're using Gazebo, and Gazebo already has a predefined origin by the program itself, so I have to use that, you know, uh, origin for calculating my offset. So anyway, um, I gotta cheat that message. So that message is is actually of the type odometry, and it's part of the navigation messages family. And this is why I imported this line, right? So right now I need to subscribe to that odometry topic. And despite the fact that I did not create an explicit uh, subscriber here, there is another method of subscribing, which is like a head on run subscribing, all right? Which is called Rospy that wait for message. So what this, what the command basically does is, is that it lets the program wait or freeze until the first message coming from this topic is received. Right, so it's like a one-time subscription. So what happens here is that when I execute that line of code, I'll be waiting for a message from the topic Udom, which is of the type odometry. And once I receive that message, I'm gonna store it on the odometry message variable here. So it's like a one-time subscription. It's like an instant callback, if you may, uh, you may call it that. Then we have to equate the initial message components with the odometry message components because this is going to be our initial position so we got to equate the two so basically what i need is to equate each component with its corresponding each component in the other message so we've got a component called pause according to pause with covariance stamped here we got yeah we got the pose All right and this pose itself has a component sorry yeah, this is pose with covariance, so it's pose, and this this is it. So it's it has another component which which is actually called pose, and it's kind of funny. So you're gonna write pose then dot pose, and you know, it's kind of weird. I don't know who does that. You should call them like different names because you have the pose with covariance type variable here. It's called pause, and at the same time, the pause variable is called pause as well. Yeah. Uh, not the best name in convention, but we have to deal with it. And then the pose itself is going to have two components, one called position and one called orientation. And then the position itself will have an X or Y or Z, and the orientation will have an X, Y, Z, W. So what we're going to write basically in our code. So the first component is in a message, the pose, and the first pose represents the pose with covariance component. And then another pose, but this is actually a different pose. They have the same name, but they're different because the second pose of the, is of the type pose. And the first pose here is of the type pose with covariance. And this is the most confusing thing I've ever explained in my life. I don't know who does that. So we don't have to do with that because these messages, you know, you can't rewrite these messages because they are standard. So we'll have to do with that. So you got pose dot pose, but you already know the difference between this pose property here and this pose property here. And we've got the position because we said that the point, sorry, that the pose itself has a point variable called position. So we got to pick the position and this position is going to be divided into X, Y, and Z. And this is why we have init message dot pose dot pose dot position dot X. So all of these are properties right of their respective objects and the same thing goes for the odometry message because the odometry message is actually of quite the same type i guess if you open the navigation uh, messages here opt ross the neotic and then the share you've got something called the navigation messages here somewhere i guess yeah here it is you get the message and the type was odometry, so you can figure odometry is actually has actually has a header, but I'm not interested in the header and I'm not interested in the child and stuff like that. I'm interested, yeah, it's called pose with covariance, which is, which is basically this message. So it's gonna be you know the same writing. So I'm gonna type as well odometry message to pose to pose to position to x, then y, then. You can actually skip the Z because, or the Z, because, you know, the Z component is always zero in this case. You don't have to redefine it because the robot is already 
doesn't have like a vertical height it doesn't move in the z-axis so you can neglect that or you can include it and say it's zero it's basically the same thing uh, and we've got the orientation this time we'll change the position property and let it be orientation property and we're going to equate the x component and the y component and the z component and the w component and we're going to have a simple delay here and the, and the purpose of this delay is just to you know uh, you know uh, like relieve the stress a little bit uh, stress relief for the terminal itself and the user actually needs some time to you know especially if there are some messages that are gonna pop out uh, at some point so we gotta have some delays in order for the user to start reading messages in order instead of just having um, you know a wave of messages popping up at the same time so we're gonna sleep for a while right after uh, publishing this topic actually before publishing this topic uh, you can put the delay here and you can neglect the delay if you want it's basically you know just for convenience and then you're gonna publish the message so you gotta say rospider login info or log info and this is basically some form of a fancy print or a fancy display right so it's like it's the same as the print property but it's like a ROS printing instead of just using the Python printing uh, so here I'm saying that I'm setting the initial post then I'm gonna publish the initial message or the initial post message and then I'm gonna log in info saying that the initial post is set All right so let's try out this code let's relaunch the navigation stack or the navigation uh, package so here we have the navigation package so now let's cross run auto nav and the name of the of the file which is init message to pi and see what happens oh i forgot to make it an executable maybe i forgot even to copy the name correctly maybe um let's get to the auto nav scripts yeah actually it's called init pose not init message so that was the problem All right so let's open up arvis here and let's observe what happens so yeah everything is set and it's even more accurate than when i used arrows so you've got the login info here which is a fancy print you can use print if you want but the the login info seems like cooler a little bit and we're now like expert ROS developers or experienced ROS developers so but yeah we're gonna use fancy stuff so that's the first part of our code now I'm gonna kill the node the second part which is navigating to a goal and this is you know somehow complicated because we're using like too many hidden layers so let us investigate the code first i'm going to close that and i'm going to open the close the goal post of pi right so here we're actually using something called the action library server and it's a type of service or a special type of service so we're like making a client in our node here and this client is gonna you know ask for a service from this action library server and what this action library server does it's actually a special type of server responsible for some you know dedicated ROS tasks one of these tasks is like sending uh, commands to the move base package something like that you can just um, you know um, imagine the whole stuff that way so let's just navigate through the code so first, uh, the user environment, which is Python or Python 3, right? If, if you're free to change Python, actually Python 2 and Python 3 are quite the same in these codes. So you can use either that version or that version, it doesn't matter. So I'm gonna import RawSpy, of course, and I'm going to import something called the action library. As we said, the action library is responsible for some, you know, ROS dedicated tasks like 
sending um, these go commands to the move base uh, package or the move base node. And we're going to import some messages from something called the move base messages. So since we're using move base, which is basically our control module, uh, it is uh, reasonable to use some of these messages. So we got like two types of messages, which is move base action and move base goal. All right, and we'll see how we're going to use these types of messages and their components and stuff like that when we get to that part in the code. So we'll have some callbacks here. But before going through the callbacks, let's just navigate uh, through the, the rest of the code and we'll get back to the callbacks. So we're going to initialize the node. We're going to call it goal pause. And then we're going to create a client here because we need you know, to ask for a special service. And we're going to create that client for this function here. And as I said, it might be a little bit different from the server client architecture that we were introduced to before because this is a, a special type of server. So it has like built in functions that we have to use. So we're gonna use the action library function called simple action client. All right, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not really sure why it's called simple action, right? Uh, but it's just the name of the package. And this is what you're gonna face when you're like designing engineering projects using ROS. There are many packages that you have not developed yourself. So you'll have to deal with, you know, the naming conventions that the package designers uh, dictated on you, all right? So you, we're gonna call, uh, we're gonna use the, the service like called, uh, the service called MoveBase and message is called move base action, right? So, well, yeah, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of weird why we have a message in a service, but let's just, you know, stick to that convention here because as I said, this is a special server client uh, thing. Then as usual, I'm gonna wait for my server until it's available. So this navigation client will wait for its server and then we need to determine the components of our move base goal. So this is basically the message that is going to contain uh, the coordinates of the location of the powers that we want to navigate to. So it has a header, which is composed of a frame ID, like last time, and this frame ID has to be the map, as usual. And then we got a header stamp, which is a timestamp, Right. And as I said before, this is the stamp uh, that records the time at which this specific message was made. You can include it. You, In fact, I included it here, and I can't remember whether I needed to or not, so maybe I'll try to delete that and see what happens, but I think nothing would happen. But anyway, I just included it here. And then I'm going to you know, focus on the most important part, which is defining the pose that I want to get to. And... Uh, as I said before, that move base goal has like uh well the goal message yeah here yeah here's the goal message and it's got a component called target pose and then pose uh and then position and then x and this is pretty much re resembles the uh, the pose with covariance that we used before the, the pose with covariance message so if you open up the move base goal for example so let's head to our other locations computer and opt ross neotic share and we're gonna you we're gonna view the move base uh, messages so we've got the move base messages. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, here it is. Got the messages. So we've got a move base goal. Yeah, this one. So yeah, it has a pose stamped architecture, which is, you know, uh, one of the geometry messages, as we said before. So it's quite the same type. That's why you can find that it has basically the same components, except that uh, he had uh, the professional courtesy of calling 
this target pose instead of pose and instead of having two like two properties called pose it simultaneously within the same line so at least now this is called target pose and this is pose so when you change the name a bit still you know it's progress right and we've got the property position and then the x uh, coordinate and when it comes to these numbers i actually made these numbers up you don't have to use them right you can change them if you want as long as these numbers uh lie or these coordinates lie within some area in uh the turtle bot home here some area within these walls because the robot would uh would not navigate to you know outside of these walls so i'll just pick any point here that is not an obstacle so i picked that actually i made that up and it turned out to be and turned out it turned out to be fine so i can change the values if you want but right, feel free to do whatever you want when it comes to these values i just pick like a random target and it turned out to be uh, to not be an obstacle all right so these are the components and the, this these are the orientation components and then this nav client here is going to use a function called send goal which is going to send the goal message and it's going to include three uh, callbacks and this is really something special because we don't see that much uh, callbacks in a certain or or in some function right so uh, if you got to uh, if you got back to these callbacks here we'll find that they're pr they are just like printing messages all right so i've got here three types of messages one called extra one called feedback and one called status and result so extra means that the goal pose being processed and feedback uh, like i'm sending the current location plus feedback so what basically active callback means is that the goal that you've just sent is being analyzed is being processed uh i'm just waiting to generate some path for example and the feedback once the path is generated and now i'm walking through all right i'm going to give you a feedback of the current location as uh as i'm marching forward and then there is a final result which is the done callback so you have one of three results one of three possible results and this status is like you know a, a closed box message that we don't get to see right away so uh if the status is equal to three and this again was declared by the designer you're gonna say that the goal reached so if the status is equal to three that means that you've reached your goal and the robot is now static if the status is equal to two or equal to eight and i don't know why specifically these numbers are chosen uh the goal is cancelled for some reason all right so basically maybe the user just killed a node or something and if the status is equal to four then the goal has been aborted because i tried to like plan to reach that goal and i try and i you know exerted an effort and i can't find any optimal path or i can't find even a path to that point like for example uh choosing a pose that lies outside the walls for example so i'm it's impossible to get uh, a plan that's gonna suit that target so i'm gonna abort the goal eventually because i've executed so many iterations and nothing seems to fit so i'm just gonna abort that goal all right so this message basically means I give up, all right? So uh, this finished variable here is like the nav client wait for results. So I'm waiting for the results, basically. It's like freezing the code here till the result is uh, given, all right? And this result basically is what shows up here. So this is basically like a raw spider spin that is spinning until the result of the navigation is given. So um, if finished is true, uh, then you're going to display the result to the user on the terminal using the raw spider look info. If it's not finished, then you're going to type that the action server is not available for some reason, right? uh so that's basically the code and we don't have you know like um, a saying in most of these functions because 
they are like clause box functions and they're designed that way but you if you can refer to the original server client architecture in case you want to like relate to the most logical explanation for uh, these uh, chunks of code here all right so we got some you know we got some components that really resemble uh, the, the definitions that we talked about before for the standard types like the standard services and standard messages and stuff like that so without further ado let's um, let's run that so let's open up the navigation package and something's wrong here actually I run something that is right that is weird so let's try it again yeah it's basically working so <laughs> that was pretty weird and let's uh, first of all let's cross run the inner pose in order to align both maps and then let's run the goal pose dot pi and see what happens yeah as expected I'm now navigating to the position I want and you can find that the login info is just being printed so while you're not finished so you, you get some feedback here right which is your uh, well, I'm not sure what's happening, but probably it's just I'm using up too many resources because I'm recording uh, the screen maybe and running Gazebo at the same time and having my browser with with so many tabs. So maybe that's the reason. But anyway, I'm glad that we ran it once at least, and you should try it out, and you should try typing the code yourself. So this is the part, the, uh, the first part of our AutoNav package, and we're going to continue developing that package in the second part of our tutorial, which is session 10. So let's summarize what we did today. We navigated the TurtleBot world programmatically. That means through uh, code instead of just using Arvis. So we basically sent initial, an initialization message to the AMCL and a goal message to the move base ourselves. And then we started to navigate from an initial post to a target post. Now, something I would recommend is that you can now create a launch file, which would allow you to run uh, both nodes at the same time. So we can like run the initialization node first and then the navigation node and see what happens. So you're like having uh, uh, a launch file that could allow you to navigate directly to a certain point using the information of your pre-saved map and you might even extend that exercise in order to include a third node for example which is in this case is going to be your mission planner so you're gonna you know have like a series of uh, of goals that you want to reach in, in a sequential fashion so you first navigate to a point and we're done then you get to a second point and then to a third point and you gotta make use of the if statements and uh, the callbacks that are located within your goal uh, pose uh, uh, python file in order to initiate new goals and you know like execute different missions like you're navigating through your environment so you're, for example you're operating in a warehouse so you're going to the collection point and then from the collection point to um, you know the storage area for example so I recommend that you continue playing with that code because this is how you actually learn you challenge yourself so next uh, we're going to you know continue developing our AutoNav package in order to include additional features that we did not have before <laughs>